How's it going everyone? It's your boyfriend Mad C2 and in this episode I'm skipping the intro and getting down to business. Today we are making custom brackets for my 25 row coil red oil coolers. On my first attempt you can see I tried bending an aluminum bar but that didn't turn out right. One side came out longer than the other. On my second attempt I felt pretty badass and thought I could show off my welding skills but I totally forgot I still sucked. So then I consulted with Elon Musk. Please Elon Musk! Give me some ideas for this oil cooler bracket. Uh, it's, well, I, I wouldn't, for the prototype at least, I would recommend not dropping anything when you're near it. This is what I came up with. I want to make this as bolt on as possible for you guys as we are all doing this from our garages. To do this, we need to use our stock OEM brackets. Let me break down the plan. I'll be running two aluminum bars, one for the top and one for the bottom, followed by a spacer on each corner sandwiched in between two rubber spacers to give it enough height to reach the OEM brackets. Here I'm starting to take measurements of the oil cooler to see what I'm working with. If you are running these oil coolers, they are 13 inches in length. The oil cooler is also 2 inches in width. You can get this aluminum bar at your local hardware store. I got mine at Home Depot. 36 by 2, 1 8 thickness, ran me $12. You'll be needing two. At this point, I'm just cutting out four 13 inch bars. I'm using a bench saw, but an angle grinder will work as well. Right here, I'm just marking the center of the bar. This will help us as a guide so we can mark the area to cut out the circles for the top of the oil coolers where the fittings will go. You will see that in a bit. I made one and a half circles with a center dot using Photoshop as a fabrication hack. This will be used to mark the area where we want to cut out the circles. Add the circles to the top of the oil cooler to get a measurement of how far the circles need to be. Now that we have our measurements, we can go ahead and draw them in and get to the fun part which is cutting. I'm using this one and a half circular saw to get the job done. These are $14 at your local hardware store.
so satisfying when things go as planned. But you guys will never know how many brackets I had to make to get it right on video. Right now, I'm getting the width of the ends of the oil coolers. I'm using a 3 4 by 36 inch 1 8 thickness aluminum bar to make the spacers. You'll only need one. This cost me $5 at my local hardware store. You'll be needing 8 spacers in total, 4 for each oil cooler. Now that I have my spacers, it's time to cut out the holes for the bolts. I'm using a piece of tape to make a template from the oil cooler before transferring it to my spacer. Lastly, we gotta make the holes for the bolts on our brackets. For the bottom, use tape to hold the bracket in place before making your markings. I was able to find this door sweep for my rubber spacer at my local hardware store. The thickness of the rubber was perfect and is also weather resistant. This cost me $12, you'll only need one. Use a flat screwdriver to pry out the rubber. You will be needing to cut out 16 of these rubber spacers.
I'm using these hollow punch set to make the holes in the rubber spacer. Now that we have all our hardware, this is the moment of truth. It's time to test fit everything. And here's my completed bracket in all its glory. Not bad for a backyard mechanic. So I found out that my car was in some type of accident before. The driver's side area was actually a little pushed in, but affected both sides. Regardless, you'll need to remove both your headlights to be able to get accurate markings of where you need to drill out the holes on your custom bracket to your OEM RX-8 bracket. The damage wasn't actually that bad, I was able to straighten this off camera, but still was a bummer to find this out. So here's my first attempt at mounting my oil cooler. I can say this, with a 2 inch aluminum bracket, you have plenty of tries to get the mounting right. Another tip guys, buy a set of nuts, washer and bolts to make this installation easier. Here's the reveal of my R3 bumper. I wasn't supposed to show you guys this to a later video, but it's definitely needed in getting the mounting right for the oil coolers. As you can see here, from the front, it looks so sexy. But when I get to the back of the bumper, then the ugliness shows. 
The oil cooler is sticking out way too much, but not bad for my first attempt. I put back part of the fender liner to help with the alignment. Found out I need to shave the bracket more to give the oil cooler more angle. Here are the brackets, shaved and formed same as the oil cooler. I'm also mounting my bumper to help getting the angle of the oil cooler right. My daughter also wanted to be a part of the video. Trial and error all day. Finally, I got the angle right based on my thumbs up here and also just for craps and giggles, I wanted to try out my fog lights to see if they fit. Before I do a little movie magic, I gotta say, mounting these oil coolers was definitely a pain in the ass to get right, but after completing the install, you can see everything came out great. Also, one of my subscribers asked if this would work for the RX-8 with a stock Renesis motor. Yes, this would, and Franklin Engineering does make an external feed adapter for the Renesis motor as well. You might have to find another mount for your external filter adapter though if you don't want to cut out the center brace in the engine bay. So without further ado, in 3, 2, 1...
I hope you guys enjoyed part 2 of completing my oil system. Part 3 will be the last part which will actually focus on banging in the firewall. It's your boy Free Matt C2 and peace out and see you next time.